creative has nothing for you. It's a phrase no wrestler wants to hear. What it translates to is, we've been so busy finding funny pictures of Shinsuke Nakamura's face for Jinder to mock, whilst basically doing Krusty's flappy dicky shtick, that we couldn't be asked to write anything for you. Sorry about that. But on the odd occasion, getting nothing from creative is the lesser of two evils. Because sometimes they come up with an idea so bad, you'd be better off hanging out and catering with Kurt Hawkins, Primo and Epico. Yes, those two apparently still work for WWE, rather than being on TV trying to make something work that is unequivocally dog Even the greats sometimes struggle with what they're given, and with that in mind, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are 10 WWE ideas so awful even legends couldn't get them over. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10. Creepy Little Bastard A compromise for Vince McMahon's completely irrational distaste of Christian's entire look, this was before his weird tan, the forced creepy little bastard moniker was thrust upon Captain Charisma in place of a, and I'm not making this up, face-obscuring blue dot the chairman originally pitched. How did you ever make money, Vince? A foot soldier for some of 2003's worst barrel scraping concepts, Stone Cold Steve Austin was a useful storyline proponent for the company during a period of pained flux, earning cheers and jeers for any old the writing staff were pitching because he was the rattlesnake, not because the ideas were any good. Nothing was attacked with such vigor as the CLB nickname. Austin insisted the fans chant it a Christian and was met with crickets. When Stone Cold can't make a chant work, you know you've screwed up. Number 9. Booger Red I know what you're thinking, what the f is a Booger Red. Well, according to my big book of WWE, it was the nickname JR attempted to hang on The Undertaker's American Badass persona. They really tried to cram all kinds of bad into this character, didn't they? Apparently, Booger Red was the nickname of another red-headed badass from Texas, formerly UT linebacker and Hall of Famer Tommy Nobis. If you look up Booger in the dictionary, it's a southern expression meaning a frightening apparition, of which Undertaker certainly is. Plus, he's naturally red-headed. JR thought the name worked, literally everyone else didn't. Number 8. Planet of the Apes the year 2000 in WWE remains an example of how important momentum is for a product such as professional wrestling. Everybody and everything was over. This was over. This was over. Jesus, even this was over for Christ's sake. WWE had plugged into an audience that absolutely adored WWE. The only problem? They had absolutely no interest in anything else, especially when the product fell off a cliff a year later. Chris Jericho and Stephanie McMahon found this out in mid-2001. Their chemistry the prior year had been sublime, with the billion-dollar princess a valuable entity in Y2J's rivalry with Triple H. However, when they were forced out on Raw to take part in a blatantly transparent Planet of the Apes cash grab segment that resulted in the prop primates shoving a pie in her face, the crowd responded as you would expect. At least nowadays, they're slightly more subtle with product placement. <sighs> now that's a refreshing glass of Wilborn juice. On with the list! Number 7. The Gobbledygooker <sighs> Gorilla Monsoon, Mean Gene Oakland, and Rowdy Roddy Piper couldn't save this. It was a bloke in a giant turkey suit who'd emerged from the 1990s Survivor Series' giant egg and was now dancing around and celebrating the worst time of the year for his creed. What the f***? Number 6. Sparkle Crotch Roman got tater tots, Dean got his little red wagon, and Seth, in a genuine attempt to help the floundering babyface, 
Got Sparkle Crotch. No wonder they wanted to go back to their good old Shield days, eh? Rollins having a pop at US champion Jericho's twinkly tights was a bit rich, considering how he'd accessorize his own attire at WrestleMania a few months later. Look, none of the Shield lads are really at fault here. They are merely vehicles for this sort of nonsense to be peddled. The Sparkle Crotch line spoke mostly to a beleaguered writing team, presumably desperate to get lines on Raw to appease the audience of one that once pitched actually romancing his own daughter. The less said about sparkly crotches there, the better. Number 5. Isaac Yankum, DDS The wrestling dentist wasn't the first or worst mid-90s Moonlighter gimmick kicking around in the doldrums of WWE's creative Nadir. <laughs> <laughs> but it was given the biggest opportunity to succeed at its inception. Long before his duplicitous die job died a death as a discount diesel, Jacobs donned daft decay as a dental destroyer. McMahon was the real D-bag though for forcing Bret Hart and Jerry Lauder to literally work their socks off in order to justify the existence of the gimmick in the first place after the King's Kiss My Foot loss a month earlier. Hart and Lawler's feud thrived amongst some of the worst creative ever thrown at such talents, with the pair literally getting years out of your mum jokes, an absurd assertion that the hitman hated foreigners, and the aforementioned regalities. Isaac Yankum DDS was just another ludicrous idea thrust upon them that the audience ironically refused to swallow. Number 4. Honky Tonk Man Hulkamaniac the Elvis Presley knockoff and dad of Elias was loathed enough to tease audiences to pay top dollar time and time again to watch him lose before he eventually succumbed to the Ultimate Warrior at SummerSlam 1988. But that wasn't supposed to be the life of the gimmick. Vince McMahon completely missed the boat. <laughs> Thank God that doesn't happen nowadays, and saw the persona as a charming throwback to a bygone era. Dripping in obnoxious idiocy with his slicked-backed hair and goofy suspenders, Honky was instantly detestable. The solution? A ringing endorsement from Hulk Hogan himself, of course. Unfortunately for those in the company inexplicably desperate for a guitar hero, even the famed Hulk dust only sat like dandruff on Honky's shoulders. An indignant Fan vote heel turn was a uniquely perfect way to cement his new villainous states. Number 3. Cammy. The latest crime against creativity forced upon the phenomenal one, and there have been plenty since his arrival in 2016, has been Cammy, a piss poor portmanteau of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn designed ostensibly to get under their skin. Scripted with less effort than they put into the god awful text that pops up during a promo, I HATE IT! The line's failure to land resulted in the company employing brutal repetition until it gained traction. Styles' promos became in-joke drinking games for fans watching and waiting for his tepid delivery of the wretched nickname. Look, AJ will be fine just as soon as Cammy is finally allowed to fade away like a fart in the wind. Number 2. Try an odd outlier this, in that Shawn Michaels and Triple H were latterly lauded for their experimentation during the embryonic stages of the Attitude Era, gambling massive fines for killer lines in an effort to share the load and the spotlight with Stone Cold. But their colouring outside the lines didn't always go to plan, as much as the clever compilation edits on the network would have you think. WWE changing history? Surely not. Case in point, HBK attempting to propose a new nickname name for Triple H mid-promo. Whilst tearing apart impending pay-per-view rivals Ken Shamrock and Sergeant Slaughter, two men I really wouldn't f*** with, Sean threw to his colleague with a Legion of Doom-esque, tell him try, try, try. In case you were wondering, here's how the audience responded to this new moniker. That, combined with Jim Ross's utter contempt on commentary, ensured the pair never aired that nickname again. Number 1. The Kiss My Ass Club 
Launched the night after he took back storyline control of his company, wasn't the invasion great, kids? The sight gag of simpering alliance turncoat William Regal laying a smacker on McMahon's ass cheek just to get his job back would have justified the concept as a one-shot deal. That it went on and on and on for weeks before being dragged out of obscurity years later is what made the idea so utterly detestable, and perhaps the darkest chapter of Big Vin's decorated life on screen. And that is saying something. It being a Vince passion project ensured that everybody would be enlisted to make it a heat seeker. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Mick Foley, Shawn Michaels and countless other luminaries have at one point been involved in segments entirely devoted to McMahon whipping his flu out on television. With The Undertaker's late 2001 heel turn even based around Jim Ross's understandable refusal to partake. Hornswoggle remains the last inductee, marking now a full decade since Vince's bare backside appeared mid-ring on WWE television. Perhaps he's finally got it out of his system. But then, it is wrestling. Never say never. Well done, you made it all the way to the end of the video. Now, I'm not just here to increase our market share with women aged 18 to 35, but to tell you to watch one of these other videos we've made that are probably quite good. So, go on. I'll feel that one or that one. They're both. Cool. There, there you go.